Welcome back to Open Line. We've got a great conversation going on tonight about your money, 401ks, Ross IRAs. Mm -hmm. What the heck are they? What to do with them? How to make the most of your money? It can all get kind of confusing after a while. Yes. Yeah. And well, it all comes together. Thankfully, John Navin is here to help us out. <laughs> it's you. not confusing to you. You have no. this inside out, backwards and forwards. You know what it's about. We yeah. need those people. We have David here on the line. David, I understand you have a pretty common question that a lot of us go through when we switch jobs. What's your question? Yes, sir. Um, I, uh, uh, I I worked at a few places that took out money on my 401k, and uh, uh, how do I find out how much I have in there? How would I go about, uh, you know, just finding it and seeing how much of my money has grown? Mm-hmm. It can be hard if you, yeah, you know, yeah. transfer from one job to another and you're thinking, oh, I kind of lost track of things. Yeah. So yeah. where do you start with that? Um, so you haven't got any statements at all? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I had a motorcycle accident and I was working at Colonial Bakery. Um, and I, a six-year-old man pulled out in front of me and I'm just lucky to get live. But um, I haven't got anything. I was in the union, AS, AFL, Seattle, whatever. Uh, and they were taking out bunches of money. I was working 65, 75 hours a week. Um, and, and there should be a substantial amount of money somewhere. They were, they were matching the money that come out of my check. They were matching it. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there should be a couple things from what it sounds like. Um, if you were in the pension, the near, or if you were in the union, typically they would they withhold, mm -hmm. you know, X number of dollars each hour that you work to put into the pension plan, so there should be a pension benefit somewhere. Uh, the 401k, kind of the same thing. My suggestion would be start with human resources. You know, can, can you get a hold of human resources at the uh, employer, the old employer? They never answered the phone. I've went over there a few times, and every time I go over there, the lady tells me the man that deals with that is not here. I mean, it's like, like they're ghosts. I can't find them. I can't get in touch with them. Uh, so uh, I'm really kind of just stuck. Mm -hmm. Now, Continental Bakery. Um, is it Colonial or Continental? Col Colonial on 870 South is where I work. Nah. All right. Um, yeah, I, and they have a corporate headquarters, I think, don't they? Isn't, they used to be corporate out of, I think, out of uh, Franklin Park or Schiller Park, Illinois, weren't they? Same place? I don't know about that. Uh, Budweiser and has a bush owned them when I was working for them. Okay. So pretty big corporations yeah. we're talking about here. Well, if I'm not mistaken, they make ho-hos and Twinkies and... All kinds of popular stuff. I kind of have a sweet tooth. So <laughs> <I can. laughs> um, I'm familiar with yeah. that company. Um, yeah, I, I would say if you can't get it, the information from the local office here, um, See if you can if you can go higher up. Mm -hmm. The other thing I do know is that that company you know filed bankruptcy last mm -hmm. year, and so they were out. And I don't know who. I think a company out of Mexico, if I'm not mistaken, actually bought them. Oh. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure who owns them now. Um, you may have to do a little research on yeah, that. Yeah, you may have to do a little Google work. Is probably the the best mm -hmm. way. That's that's a tough one. I'm I'm sorry. I feel bad for you because yeah, I know what it's oh. like to run into that. You get a dead end and uh, dead end. Or if you could find any statement. that money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any any statement at all, because the, the company doesn't have the money. It's it's held somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and you just have to get to the other company to find out where they held it, or an old statement. Oh, right. That's amazing. Um, well, David, good luck to you. I, I don't know that we can help you any further, um, mm -hmm. but just. Keep on calling. That's the best thing that you can absolutely do. Yeah. Thank okay, thank you. Thank best you. of luck to you, David. Have a nice night. You too. You too. Wow, that can be difficult. So yeah, it, it speaks to hard. the importance of staying on top of things and keeping those statements. You yeah. can't just go, I don't understand it. I'm going to throw it away. Well, that leads to the next point, yeah. which is oftentimes, you know, inside the 401k, because most people have limited knowledge when it comes to some mm -hmm. of this stuff. They know they want to participate. Um, 20 years ago, there was a pension or defined benefit plan that they could go into, mm -hmm. and we didn't have to do any of this retirement planning. Yeah. Because we could get 6% on our CDs, and uh, mm -hmm. the company was doing a pension. Well, they don't do it anymore because the companies have discovered that it, they're it not just, making money on that. No, it's and it's, like, yeah. it's a lot cheaper yes. for them just to say, here you go. Well, when you had a pension plan or defined benefit, you had a money manager that said, here's how we're going to invest this money mm -hmm. to make sure it's taken care of the best way for you. Um, and they had a responsibility to make a grill. Well, now you're left to do it all yourself. Yeah. And you know, if it's not what you do, it becomes very, very tough. So uh, don't ignore the statements when they come. 
see if you can talk to whoever the rep may be on the plan or if you call any other financial advisor like for example we we manage people's 401ks so when they come in and they sit down and they work with us we will then um, we have some software that we can actually link their 401k I can see their 401k statements so it's automatically connected and it all works together so it is a, a big picture yes. what you want to look at when you're looking at someone's investment it yeah. all matters <laughs> you want to be able to see the whole thing and you want to use the 401k piece for what you you can use it for and I'll tell you this dude um, not you everybody call somebody because no matter how much money you have start with someone mm -hmm. because somebody will help you and be very very leery though of uh, people who are only on commission I'd, I would watch out for that because you don't want to get I see a lot of sales reps who are not financial advisors who are just trying to sell something but uh -huh. see if you can find a good financial advisor to at least guide you in some of this stuff well, let me ask you then. Okay. What's a, how do you know you have found a good financial <laughs> advisor? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, do you some I can research? like you till the cows come home, but maybe you're not good. Yeah, you I'm know, good, like person and just right. a likable person. Right, but right. how do you know? Yep. Um, I think you have to look at a few things. First of all, you have to look at their their background, expertise, experience. Um, where do they come from? Do their philosophies jive with what you're thinking mm -hmm. and, and where you are? The other thing is they have to have, again, we're talking about a plan. They have to have a plan. They have to have a system, and they have to have a process. So you have to have those three things and say, okay, here's how we're going to manage money. So that, you alluded to this earlier, uh, or no, we were talking about, uh, I think it was Loretta who was asking about the market went down. Yes. All that stuff, meaning it's just news. Mm -hmm. And now some of yeah. the news is good. Some of the news, they got to be careful. <laughs> some of the news is not so good. What are you saying, John? That's it's, my job. <laughs> that's why I had to be careful. It's just sensationalism. Sure. It's just people trying to get people You're excited. getting nuggets. Yeah. And you need someone to give you a bigger picture. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. don't confuse news with good newsworthy information with entertainment. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times yes. it's just entertainment. Mm -hmm. And they'll put headlines up and they'll just to scare us or mm -hmm. to get us excited. Or So look at the whole picture. Look at the plan. If you're going to do it alone, um, I would say I'll make this suggestion. Allocate the funds into, uh, depending on your time horizon, you want to break the funds up and you also want to reallocate. So if you can't, I don't know if I answered your whole question about finding a good advisor. I don't know. I don't, I'll hmm. come back to it. Okay. So finding a good advisor, then we'll jump to allocation. Um, <laughs> do some research. Make sure you and your spouse like them, not just one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, Ladies, it's very, very important that you do like them because what's going to happen is you're going to control most of the wealth in the future. <laughs> um, and you make the decisions now, whether you realize mm -hmm. it or not, you are the ones who are driving what men do. We'll never say that out loud, but it's true. <laughs> um, so we listen to you all the time. So you want to find someone that you're both comfortable with? Sure. That does a good job, that's got some history, um, that you can Google, find out some information, make sure there's no dings against the record, dings, uh, complaints make sure they didn't file bankruptcy. Um, another thing may be uh, the Better Business Bureau. So log on to the Better Business Bureau, get some re as much research as you possibly can, and then go meet them. Sure. And by all means, don't be embarrassed by going to meet somebody. It can be intimidating because yes. you're showing somebody a very personal side of your story, of yourself, yeah. saying, this is how much money I have. Yeah. I, I see that a lot. And th they don't want to get beat up. Yeah, they don't want to get yes. talked down to, belittled, and said right. you were doing something wrong. Yeah. So if you feel that way with any, whoever you meet, I would say, just to say to that person, thanks for your time. Mm -hmm. Talk to you later, because it's not ever going to be a good fit. Mm -mm. So. Mm -mm. Um, okay. Let's right. get to Jennifer on the line real quick. Right. Jennifer, thank you for being with us today. Go ahead with your question. Uh, yes, I would like to know. I will be retiring next year, and I have a Roth IRA account. And, um, you know, you can only make a certain amount of money with the retirement. Uh, would that count as income if I took it out after I retired? The Roth? Yes. No. Uh-uh. You could, you could take that all. Well, let me, let me back up. Have you owned it for more than five years? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and you're over 59 and a half? Yes. Yeah. No, you don't. So she can take that whole lump sum, whatever is in there? Yeah. But that may not be the best way to go. It depends on what you're trying to achieve. Because you have money that, that is in that account that's going to grow tax-free forever. 
that also will not impact your Social Security as you get taking Social Security. Does that make sense? It won't affect my Social Security as income. I can only make 15000 per year with the Social Security. Because yeah, you're 63? Yes. Yeah, 15000 a year. Um, but you also may look at some different strategies, and this is where looking at your whole picture comes into play. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let me go back, and I know it gets confusing, so I'm going to try and do this without being confusing. But the money you pull out of your Roth does not affect your Social Security from a taxation standpoint. Anything you make above a certain dollar amount, if you're single, it's uh, 25000 to 34000 If you're married, there's, there's different parameters, and I won't go through them all, but they'll tax your Social Security. Well, money that you would draw from a Roth is not income, so it does not go against that calculation. So there may be a strategy that you look and you say, maybe I don't take this Roth money right away and I hold that in deferral uh, until I start taking Social Security because when you pull that money out of the Roth, it doesn't affect your Social Security and how you get taxed. So that's, that's one thing to consider. Um, another one, maybe you are correct uh, with, with getting taxed on Social Security, you can't make more than 15,000 a year. It's 15,437 or some, some odd dollars, but yeah, you're, you're right about that. And again, it might just be looking at the whole picture and seeing where mm -hmm. you need to or want to pull money from. Jennifer, does that help? Yes. Good. It does. Fantastic. Good. Well, thank you for being part of Open Line. I like positive results. Very good. Thank you. Let's talk about the stress test again, because a lot uh, of people, it sounds like they could use a little guidance. Yes. Yes. Uh, the portfolio stress test is a, a method in which we use, it's the first step in our process, to look at their whole uh, portfolio and see how it's actually performing. So what's working inside of it? What's not working inside of it? Is it working compared to what their goals are? Mm -hmm. How many fees are they paying? Um, what happens if the market crashes again? What's going to happen to their portfolio? So it's just a great way for them to come in, get a, a free, a complimentary portfolio stress test. So the first 10 callers, we're, we're, we're doing that complimentary. So, so call that number you see on the screen right now. Yeah. Leave your name and number, and John and his group will get back to you yes. about the stress test. And when I come in for that stress test, I need to bring copies of everything financially that I have? Just your statements or whatever you feel most comfortable yeah. bringing. Some people, you know, will bring everything, and i got people that bring their you know their wills their trusts they bring it all in we sit mm -hmm. down and that's fine uh, I've got some folks that are a bit more reserved as you had mentioned that mm -hmm. may not want to do that first you bring it with you and then we'll have a conversation and if you feel comfortable doing it then, then you can pull it out sure if, if you not, don't you just keep it in your pocket and you be say, done nice meeting you yeah yeah very good okay yeah. we're going to take a quick break again the lines are open for you tonight to get your questions answered complimentary <laughs> about your 401k Roth or IRA go ahead and give us a call we'd love to hear from you stay with us